Hello folks and welcome to part 4 of the SER Diagram 1328 coal wagon. If you remember last time we finished off the CAD design. We exported that CAD design into Chitibox, a bit of 3D printing slicer software. So this time we're going to look at actually setting up and setting off that print. And hopefully we'll get through to the clean up and post processing stage as well. So you might be wondering why we're looking at a couple of cardboard boxes. This is a temporary setup for me at the moment, so please don't write in saying I'm not using the correct ventilation or safety stuff. This is temporary until I can sort that out. First part, the 3D printer itself. I'm keeping all of this stuff under cardboard boxes at the moment because it keeps the um, resin in much better condition, so I don't have to um, to remove all the resin and store it properly between prints. So, if we have a look at the printer itself, by the way, this is an IPA tank, you don't need to know about that at the moment. So, let's move in and have a look, closer look at the actual printer. So, hopefully, you can see all this fairly well. We have down here the orange bit is the resin tank full of orange resin appropriately. This bit up here is the print head, so that when we print will move down into the resin and then move up layer by layer. The LCD screen is under the print bed here. We control the unit with the touch screen down the bottom here, and there's a couple of inputs on the side, including one from a memory stick, which is what we've exported the file from the slicer software onto. Just going to plug that in there. And turn the unit on. So, it looks like we're running a little bit low on resin. So we're just going to top that up a little bit. Resin comes in bottles like this. It's about £50 a litre. Which is very expensive, but you don't tend to use too much of it. Again, you'd normally use gloves for this kind of procedure, but I'm pretty confident I'm not going to get any on my hands at this stage, so we won't bother for now. Let's mix up the new resin that we've just put in with the old stuff. We don't want any patches that haven't printed properly or anything like that. Just make sure that's thoroughly mixed and the only real way you can tell whether you've got enough in there to do a print is by experience so I tend to fill it about a quarter of the way up on this particular printer which is an Anycubic Photon the original version not the, the S version there's a little ridge just on the inside of the tank and I fill it up to that line which is usually good enough for pretty much any prints unless it's a particularly tall thing. Okay, so I reckon that is sufficiently mixed. Very careful not to get this anywhere. I have a little disposal unit just off screen over there where I keep this sort of thing. And let's close that up, stop any fumes getting out as quickly as possible. Again, I haven't worn a mask for this just because you wouldn't be able to hear me if I was. But for a minute's exposure like that, it's not too bad. We've got the window open up here as well. This is part of the reason I'm set up in this corner, is because there's a window just there, which is always open when the printer is running. So let's move you around a little bit. And... Have a look at what we're doing down on the screen here. So, one of the things you have to do with a 3D printer like this is level the bed. I'm not going to bother showing you that because there's so many videos on YouTube already that will do that. Essentially we have print, system information and tools. 
So this tool section here is what you'd use for levelling the bed and telling the printer where it is and so on. We're not going to do that for now. We are just going to go straight into print. Scroll down to find the print that we want, which fortunately happens to be the first one. And then we can either delete that off the memory stick, print it, or return to the previous menu. It gives you a nice little preview as well on here, so you can actually see you've selected the right model. Press print, and off we go. So if I zoom you out a little bit, you can see the print bed starting to come down here. And this screen gives you some nice information about the print as it's going on. So we have a percentage completion bar down here. We have a time elapsed, a time remaining, which is all worked out from the print software. And we have a number of layers. So this print is 1,134 layers. And it's estimated to take nine and a half hours. So usually when you print something like this, it's a good idea to make sure it properly starts. So it'll give you a beep, and then the screen starts showing you what it's actually printing on that current layer. So let's just move in quickly for a look. So every time it does a layer, this bird will move up, release from the film, let the resin slide back underneath the bed, then it will move back down and put the next layer in. So we'll leave it at that for now, and we'll come back and check on that in a bit. So the print has now finished, or well, we finished a while ago. I've left it in the printer while I've been out at work all day to let as much resin drain off it as possible just so it's a little bit cleaner and easier to handle. So, if we glove up, always put safety first, of course. So the first thing to do is pull the print bed out of the printer. Somewhere around here I have a stock of kitchen roll for this purpose. So you want to undo the clamp, pull the print bed out, wipe off some of the resin. See so if I'd pulled this out straight away after it finished printing, there'd be resin all over here in large drips and you'd have to wipe it all off and it's a waste of resin and it gets a bit messy. So I tend to leave it a while before cleaning as much of the resin off as I can. Leave that on the side over there. Now, we can see that this isn't actually a very good print. The model itself might look alright, but if you see down the side here, particularly at this edge here, you see the print has lifted off the bed. Same story if we turn it round to this whole side here, you can see the dark section underneath. That's where the entire side has lifted off the bed while it's printing. So the likelihood is that this print is actually fairly warped, sort of upwards like this. So it might not run properly, and so on. Now, I'll probably have to reprint this, but this will do to show you sort of how it works. I'm going to close that back down and take the cover off the IPA tank. Now you'll notice the IPA tank isn't really a tank, it's more of a Tupperware lunchbox really. But that's fine, but you need something with a good seal so the IPA um, doesn't vaporise. So we're just going to de-seal that. Using this scraper tool this is much easier than normal because it's already lifted off the bed in places, but just slide that underneath to release the print, like that. 
wipe that tool off. Give this a quick wipe just to make sure there's no um, half printed bits left. And just stick that back in the printer. Ready for next time. Now I'm going to have to re-level the bed, that's the main reason the um, print wasn't perfectly stuck down. And I'm just going to give this a wipe off on the underneath as well to get as much of that excess resin off as possible. You can actually see, I don't know if you can see but I can see, along the side here, the level of detail is actually quite good. I don't know if the camera's going to focus on that. Anyway, I'm going to dump my gloves in to clean off the resin that I've got on there from handling. Give it a little bit of a shake on both sides just to move the IPA around. And then I'm going to leave it in there to soak for about half an hour. After half an hour I'll come back and turn it over because some of the um, print isn't quite underneath the IPA. And then that'll be that. I'll take it out of the IPA, leave it to drain and dry out entirely for maybe another hour or two. And then we'll be ready to move on to the next stage. So here we have a closer look at the printed model. We can see some of the details come out on the side here. You might not be able to see this on the video but there's actually a little hole just here. Let's see if I can focus on that a little bit more. There's a slight diagonal line going up here which is a print error from the z-axis. It's actually a horizontal line this way, the way it's been printed down from the bed. Um, but you can see the level of detail is actually fairly good. There's another very slight, subtle line on this side here, in the same place. But a little bit of sanding will get rid of that. That's the sort of common error you'll get on a print like this. You can see the ends have come out pretty well. And the sides, I don't know how you'll be able to see this on video. The sides down here seem to have come out okay as well. The only thing you might need to worry about is warping, so you, if you can see that's lifted off the straight edge there at the corners. And the same in this direction, so this part here might be a little bit warped that way. I think we'll be able to salvage this model, unlike what I said in the last video, but well, I guess we'll find out when we start building it. The other thing you might be able to see here is the holes for the bearings. Two of those on each chassis, and the brake block is printed on this section here. If you can see that. The internal plankings also come out pretty well. I don't know how well you can see that. There's the lines here that we can see. And you can sort of see how fine the springs are as well. Lucky that's printed okay. So the next video, we'll be going back to live streams so you can see it in all its long, drawn out, boring glory. Um, and yeah, hopefully with a little bit more light than last time. I'll get a start on actually building a thing. <laughs>